Welcome back to the layout. Uh, I know you're not having deja vu. Um, today we're going to be doing a uh, review of the second release of Atherns SBP40F locomotive. And um, so, even though we've already done a video on this back in December, um, the second release is a little bit different from the first release from 2017. So, uh, since we've already gone over the history of not only the locomotive, but also my Amtrak fleet in the previous video uh, from back in December. Uh, we'll go ahead and skip through to the unboxing of the locomotive and dive into the review and up close look of the locomotive, comparing it to the first release, and then we'll do some run bias of the locomotive on train. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm reviewing a locomotive that I already reviewed about six months ago. Um, the reason is, um, even though this is also an SDP-40F like uh, number 575 uh, that I got back in December, um, 523 is actually a variation of the model. And if you remember from the history of the locomotive that I gave in the first video, um, the first 40 locomotives, numbers 500 through 539, had varia uh, variation on the nose, which if you look closely, you can actually see that the nose of the uh, 523 is pointed rather than a flatter or flattened uh, chopped off nose like 575. 523 is represents a model of the first 40 SDP-40Fs that Amtrak got uh, back when uh, in the 1970s when the locomotive was being produced and then 575 is one of the later models. Uh, the reason for the different paint schemes is 523 represents one of the models that's been repainted into phase, the phase 2 paint scheme whereas 575 is in the original um, what's been called bloody nose uh, paint scheme of uh, I think it's called white nose. It might be I might be thinking Southern Pacific, but anyways, um, 575 is in the original paint scheme as delivered to Amtrak, and then 523, of course, has been later repainted. The other variation, in addition to the noses that you can tell between the two orders, is the uh, dynamic brake and radiator fans on the tops of the locomotives. The newer mo or the early models from the first 40 in the front, the fans are actually about twice as high as the fans in the later model on a 575 to the rear there. So Atherin has made or has uh, come out now with uh, the second run. They now have both variations of the locomotive uh, with the uh, variations in the fans as well as the nose and uh, that kind of shows how much has changed in the uh, in the hobby industry with uh, making accurate scale models of uh, locomotives and freight cars where years ago used to used to have the uh, generic models come out and then they put every paint scheme they could on them and while well, yeah they might a railroad might have a certain mo uh, that certain model on their roster but the there were changes between the railroads and stuff for what features and packages and everything kind of like when you buy a car or a vehicle and you have different options for engines and interiors and that sort of thing and likewise with locomotives uh, they had uh, different variations um, on them as well between the different railroads 
Another option thing too that um, Atherin has uh, done on this locomotive is um, they're not now possibly doing the model specific horn uh, where on 523 you have a four chime horn um, and then on the 575 you actually have two pairs of two horns or two pairs of horns for total four horns but or bells I should say but uh, um, the horns are obviously different from model to model because back in the 70s Amtrak hadn't standardized on their locomotives and, uh, and um, they had variations of uh, different paint schemes and everything. If you uh, look at the uh, other Atherin models uh, with Phase 2 they had slight variations of uh, where the, n the number placement and uh, also on the nose for the striping there's on this one, the only the red stripe is cropped around the uh, headlight, um, whereas uh, some of the mod models that Atherin is coming out with has the red stripe going right across the headlight. Um, also, uh, the black stripe didn't come on um, some of the early models uh, or other models that Atherin has come out with. Um, they have a variation where the red stripe doesn't go across that front panel it just stays on the top of the nose so they're doing a lot of model specific details so you can actually get specific, really nice specific models of these locomotives without uh, you know having to go through a lot of the work for uh, kit bashing and, and uh, scratch building that kind of thing you can have accurate ready to run models um, direct from your hobby store and of course I went through my ho local hobby store the train station on Indianola Avenue here in Columbus Ohio and uh, had this locomotive pre-ordered uh, back in March uh, since it was announced ever since uh, shortly after they were announced that uh, they would be coming out so like the 575 um, 523 is a DC model, not a DCC model. Um, the DC models came out about three days ago. And then uh, the DCC models are due out uh, in late uh, July uh, 2018. Uh, so about a month away. And some folks have asked me why I'm sticking with DC, DC instead of going to DCC. Um, DC model, um, I got this for the uh, pre-order price of uh, 179 I believe it was. Um, the DCC models are actually about 100 bucks more. So it's not just the cost. Uh, I'm grand, cost is a big factor. Um, but with uh, uh, switching to DCC uh, for me, I also have uh, 25 other locomotives uh, that the earliest one or the latest one that I got was back in 1990, uh, the P40s back in 1997. And so trying to convert all of my locomotives to uh, DCC. Um, you know, not only would I have to buy all the decoders, I'd have to take, um, and, you know, mount the decoders and wire them and everything and get into all of that. And it's just too much of a hassle for me to ha want to convert these locomo uh, older locomotives that aren't DCC ready. Um, not only that, um, you know, there's a lot of times I've heard, seen videos of, um, you know, DCC locomotives in operation. Yeah, it's nice having horns sounds, engine sounds, and that sort of thing. But it just doesn't come across as exactly realistic for me um, some of the times because, you know, the sounds are coming out of this tiny speaker where, you know, you go in real life to watch a train and you got 
big loud sounds and everything so it doesn't I mean it's nice but it's just not for me and you know other folks enjoy it so you know it's all power to them you know if you like and you know having sound coming out of your locomotives that's fine but for me it's just it's not realistic enough to go through the extra ex expense um, plus um, the fourth thing that has me not wanting to go to DCC is um, basically um, the uh, you know I, I do tech support for a living so coming home I don't want to have to there's times I don't want to have to deal with technology I just want to come down here run trains and be done with it and you know I've heard online folks you know having to program the decoders and and debug the decoders that kind of thing and it's like it's like you know I come down here to get escape from that kind of thing so so those are um, basically my reasons why I'm sticking to with uh, DC instead of DCC uh, since some folks have uh, been asking me why I'm sticking with DC but anyways enough of me babbling on um, let's go ahead and hook up the locomotives with a nice consist of uh, heritage fleet cars and take some laps around the layout
So that's the second run of Atherin's SBP40F. Uh, like the original run from 2017, I do believe they have hit the mark on uh, bringing an accurate model of these beautiful locomotives um, to the HS Go market. And, uh, uh, I know I, for one, have been wanting one of these for a long, long time. Um, but now, finally got phase one and phase two models of these. Um, hoping that in maybe the next release they'll have phase three. Crossing our fingers for that. And uh, uh, but anyways, these are beautiful models. Um, definitely a nice fit for my layout here. So, anyways, thanks for watching, folks.